Hello friends, now today we will see the worm and worm gears and its terminology. So here, the worm and worm gears, they are basically used to transmit the power or the motion between the two non-intersecting and perpendicular shafts. Here, in worm and worm gear, so worm is similar to screw, which is maybe having single or multiple start threads, which basically forms a stick. And worm, it basically drives the worm gear. And here, the worm gear is the bigger gear. And input is given to the worm, and output is taken from the worm gear. And these worm and worm gears, they are used for last speed reduction ratio, that is 100 is to 1, and it is non reversible. So, this is the terminology diagram for the worm. So, now if you see here, so this is the particular the face width, this is the bore diameter, this is the axial pitch. And this is the lead angle. And further, we will see its particular definition. So, here, what is the helix angle? First definition is helix angle. It is the angle made by the helix with the axis of rotation. So, here, if you see, so this is the axis of rotation. And whatever the angle which is made by this helical structure, so this angle with the axis of rotation is called as the helix angle. Then, lead angle. So, what is the lead angle? It is the angle made by the helix of the worm with the plane perpendicular to the axis of worm. So if you see here, so this is the angle, this which is made by the worm, which is tangent to this teeth surface, helical surface, and it is this is the perpendicular. So whatever the angle made by this tangent to this perpendicular, this is nothing but what? This is the lead angle. Then number of start. So number of start are nothing but the number of threads which are present on the worm, which are present on the cylindrical body. Now next definition is the axial pitch. So, what do you mean by axial pitch? It is the distance measured on the pitch surface from a point on one to, to the corresponding point on adjacent to in the axial direction. So, this is the distance axial pitch which is measured along the line of center line of the worm at distance between two consecutive points on a, this worm thread. So, this is nothing but what? Axial pitch. So, transfer circular pitch. So, pitch you know that it is distance between the two consecutive teeths. So, whatever the pitch which is measured in the transverse plane is called as transverse circular pitch, and whatever the pitch which we are measuring in the normal plane is called as the normal circular pitch. Then, what do you mean by lead of worm? It is nothing but the product of the number of threads or starts which are present on the worm into the axial pitch. So, in this way, we can get the lead of the worm. Now, we will see the animation of the worm animal here. So far, we have seen what are simple and compound gear trains and also the epicyclic gear trains. And now we are going to look at an arrangement which allows us a large velocity ratio or large gear reduction in a single stage. This arrangement is called as the worm and worm feed. It essentially consists of a simple spur gear over here shown in green. And it is engaging with uh, what you can view uh, to be a large bolt. Of course, it's not called a large bolt. It's called as the worm. And you can see this light blue thread of the worm is engaging with the teeth of the spur gear. The spur gear in this context is called as the worm feed. Let us see how the two move. So here you can see as uh, the worm rotates, then every rotation of the worm pushes the spur gear or the worm wheel by one tooth. So if the worm wheel has 32 teeth, then for all of them to advance and complete one rotation, the worm will have to rotate 32 times. So the gear reduction here is 1 is to 32, which is a very large reduction, not possible by using simple spur gears. Let us now look at some of the variations that are made to this arrangement in practice. So here is the first variation where the worm has not one, but three thread. In general, such worms are called multi-start worms. Here we have three, so it is called three-start worm. The pitch of all these threads, all these helices are identical. So they are just copies of each other rotated by 120. So they don't intersect. Uh, the pitch in this case is defined as the distance between two successive threads, while the lead is defined as the distance actually moved in one rotation. 
because there are three threads here, the lead will be three times the pitch. The advantage here is you can have multiple contacts between the worm and worm wheel and increasing number of contacts would increase contact area and uh, that would allow us to carry greater loads. Uh, here is another variation done to the same purpose to increase the load carrying capacity. Over here, you will see the worm wheel is having its periphery cut in a uh, hourglass-like fashion. In fact, this is called as an hourglass. And uh, because of this, the contact area between the worm and the worm wheel can be stepped up. So let us look at uh, this arrangement in cross section over here. So on the left, you see a cross section of ordinary arrangement. Right here, it is the hourglass arrangement. And you see there is some additional contact area, therefore allowing us some additional load carrying capacity. And finally, here is the last variation where uh, we have uh, this worm inclined to the plane of the wheel, worm wheel. So let us see how the two are arranged in space. So you'll see the plane of the worm wheel is making some angle with the worm axis. And this allows the worm thread to align well with the worm wheel teeth, thus increasing the contact area. The angle uh, over here is called as the lead angle. Uh, to think of it simply, you can remember that any helical element is like an inclined plane wound around a cylinder. And the angle of inclination of that plane is nothing but this lead angle. Uh, if you want, you can uh, follow this uh, link here and look up uh, the screw jack, okay, which is nothing but the simple machine that employs a uh, helical thread. And uh, because of this commonality, uh, it gives us the idea of using even this arrangement as a simple machine. So let us see that arrangement here. So you can take a simple worm and worm wheel and attach a drum to the slow moving part, which is the worm wheel, of course. And uh, if you attach the load here, that will be moving slowly. If it moves slower, it must be receiving a larger force. And that is the mechanical advantage we'll be getting in this case. So we'll see this uh, worm is uh, rotating through several rotations, while this wheel is moving, uh, rotating only fraction of a rotation. And slowly this load is rising. Thank you.